Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. All right, let's get into our content today. We are talking about the stories of Jesus. And we said it's important to study out the stories of Jesus in detail because if Jesus did it for people in the Bible time, he wants those things to happen for us today. And if we could look at how it happened, what the circumstances were, then maybe we can see the same miracles in our lives. Today we're going to look at Mark chapter 5 in verse 22. This is a very popular passage. I'm going to give you some information about a pastor when a pastor preaches a topic or a scripture passage that is very popular, it's kind of hard. It, it's, it's weighty. It's like there's a challenge there because everyone thinks they already know the story. They already think they know everything about it. And so I've got a couple nuggets today that I want to share with you about this story. Matt, uh, Mark 5, 22. This is the Amplified Version. The Amplified Bible takes every possible Greek and Hebrew word and expounds it so that you can get a bigger picture of what is happening. And here, how, this is what it says. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue came, came up to Jesus, his name is Jairus, and seeing Jesus, he prostrated himself at his feet. So he bowed down before Jesus. This was a known way to approach Jesus in the time. It was that posture of worship. And he begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him. Right? Guy comes up, asks him, yeah, man, let's go. They start walking. And a great crowd followed him and pressed him from all sides, so almost to suffocate him. And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, or an issue of blood for 12 years, and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians, and had spent all she had and was no better, but instead grew worse. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus. She came up behind him in the, in the, in the crowd and touched his garment. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. And Jesus, recognizing in himself that the power proceeded from him, had gone forth, he turned around and immediately said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And the disciples kept saying to him, you see the crowd pressing around you from all sides, and you ask, who touched me? I love it in the King James. Jesus said, who toucheth thee? And his disciples said, how sayeth thou who touched thee? There's so many people, right? Thousands of people pressing against him. Everybody's touching you. Still, he kept looking around to see her who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down at his feet, worshiped him, and told him the whole truth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith, your trust and confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health Go into peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. So good. But let's back up and let's break this down. Let's take a dive, a, dive, a deep dive, a look into this scripture. Jesus is walking. This political figure, this ruler, this leader of the air of the age comes up to him and says, My daughter's dying. Please help. They go. And as they're walking, they're interrupted. Now, how many of us would be upset that we finally get our opportunity to get to Jesus, he's on our way, and we're interrupted? We're interrupted. Now, I know some of us, we got that godly heart, but no, I wouldn't be upset. It's Jesus. Man, you get upset if someone cut you a line at McDonald's. Let alone someone interrupt Jesus from healing your dying child. Yeah, you're going to be upset. Yeah, you're going to be upset. Like, wait a second. I thought you were with me, Jesus. 
Come on, we got to go. You got time for this. Right? Jairus is, is a politician. He's a ruler. His job is to enforce the laws of the synagogue. To enforce the law of the synagogue. So think about this for a second. Jairus actually has the power to condemn this lady to death. You see, in this generation, in this time, this lady was not allowed to be in public. If anybody were to touch her in that state, they themselves would become ceremonially unclean. She would have to shout out, unclean, unclean. If she had an emergency to go somewhere, she'd have to shout that, but she didn't. She didn't do that. So she approaches Jesus, who's standing next to the person that could condemn her to death. So in her immediate proximity is the one that can condemn her to death and the one that can bring her life before her. Standing before her. Death is there and life is there. And she reaches out her hand and she grabs a hold of life. She grabs a hold of life knowing that if she's caught, the penalty could be death. She understands this. But she put herself at risk in order to get this healing. Verse 26 says, And who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians, spent all she had, and was no the better. She had this condition for 12 years, but she still sought help. I love the fact that she didn't settle and say, I guess this is just how my life is supposed to be. She didn't settle. She knew that sickness and disease ailing her body was not the perfect plan for her life. She didn't sit back and say, well, it just must be God's will for me to be like this. She didn't settle for that. She didn't settle for that. She spent all she had, and she kept seeking help, constantly pushing against the condition that was pushing her down. She refused to accept it. I want you to know this today. No matter how long you've had an issue in your body or an issue in your life or an issue in your mind, do not allow it to settle in as yours. My allergies, my eczema, my bad ankle, my bad knee, you know, my depression, my anxiety. It ain't yours. Don't claim it. Don't name it. Don't play with that little thing in your body. Oh, you know, I got that little cancerous mole. That's Betty over there. Don't name that thing. Curse it. Don't accept it. Listen, don't accept a life lesser than God's greatness. She didn't accept that. She didn't say this is the way it's supposed to be in my life. She had many physicians, and she had spent all she had. I want you to know this today, that sickness is a thief. Sickness is a thief, man. It wants to steal your joy. It wants to steal your peace. And it wants to steal your finances. Yo, going to the hospital ain't cheap. And health insurance today ain't even like we got health insurance. High deductible insurance. That ain't no insurance. <laughs> Unless you get really sick. But it's all, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot of money. Sickness is a thief and it had taken everything from her. Remember the Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. See, he wants to steal from you, man. He wants to steal more than just your money. He wants to steal your joy, your peace, your patience, your goodness, your kindness. He wants to steal. She had spent all she had. It had taken her money, her relationships, possibly her occupation. Going to the doctor with the same problem and no relief. Verse 27, she had heard. She what? She heard the reports concerning Jesus. She heard something about Jesus. And she came up behind him and touched Jesus his garment. She had heard the reports that Jesus was a healer. And she said, I've done everything else. I might as well go try Jesus. I got to tell you this, it matters what you hear. 
It matters what you hear. And it matters what you choose to believe about what you hear. I tell people, I think that we need to know what's going on in the world, but you need not sit and watch the news all day long. It matters what you hear. It matters what you hear. We're getting angry, like, like society today is getting angrier and angrier and angrier about things we're going to do nothing about. Like, it's just wild sometimes. Do not sit and watch the news all day because it matters what you hear. It matters what you see. It does because those things will be an attack on your faith. You see, someone told her that there's a guy named Jesus who does miracles and she believed. I'm going to tell you this, it matters, it matters who you tell about your God. Somebody needs to know about your God. Someone needs to know about why you would choose to go to a to church on 4th of July weekend when you could already be having your pork roast marinating and on the smoker. Oh, Jesus. Some baked beans. You could could already be getting set up for the family picnic, but you chose to come to the house of the Lord. Why? Who needs to know why you serve God the way you serve God? And this is what I love. She was quick to believe. She was quick to believe. Don't let your history turn into doubt. Don't, Don't let a failed prayer of the past make you a doubter in the things of God. Even in her weakened condition, she got herself up and she pushed herself toward Jesus. I want you to get this today. What she believed was greater than what she felt. What she believed was greater than what she felt because she still felt the pain of her disease. But she said to herself, if I touch him, I'll be healed. What she believed was greater than what she felt. And that's really hard in society today. Because we're all moved by what we feel. We're all moved by ups, being upset, by failure. We're, we're moved by pain. We're moved by offense. Offended by everything. Offended, upset. You see, your miracle will begin when you choose to believe and act on what you believe. It's not enough just to say you believe, right? Faith without works is dead. Faith without acting upon what you believe is dead. So here's what she did. Here's some things she did. Number one, she got out of bed. She got out of bed. And I'm not throwing any shade to someone who's watching online right now, sipping on a latte in bed with the AC on, with the footsie. I'm not throwing no shade. I'm just saying. She put some action, right? She got out of bed. Two, she got herself dressed. She left the house. And she went and found Jesus. She went on a search to find Jesus. Listen, I never have a problem having sit-down conversations with people who say they don't believe in God, but they're searching. I have no problem with that. Because they're looking for something. They're looking for something. The problem is, they just haven't found the right people that they want to be like. Anybody who I've ever met that doesn't believe in God, Jehovah God, or Jesus Christ, it's simply a matter of they've never found other people that they want to be like. Think about it. Why would you tell someone to be a Christian and you're miserable? You're angry. You're upset. Your family's a wreck. Why would they want to be like you? Is that what Christianity is? Being upset all the time? Telling everybody they're going to hell? I don't, don't sign me up for that. Come on, that's all I'm saying. She got herself up and she went and found the solution to her problem. Some commentary said that there were thousands of people pressing against Jesus. Thousands of people pressing against Jesus. Oral Roberts said this, everyday miracles are coming to you or passing by you. Every day, God's power is available to us. It's either coming to you or it's passing by you. Are you awake? Are you attentive? You see, this woman, she heard something about Jesus. She heard something about Jesus' garment. 
because she said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And that's kind of specific. She didn't say if I touch Jesus. She didn't say if I touch his shoulder. She didn't say if I touch his hand. She didn't say if he lays his hands on me. She says, if I but touch just the hem, just the edge. Where would she have gotten that? Where would she have thought this? Where did she, did she make this up? Good question. Matthew 14, 34 says this. And when they had crossed over to the other side, they went ashore to Generous. Generous sat. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sat around into all the surrounding countries and brought to him all who were sick and begged him to let them merely touch the fringe, the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were perfectly restored. Look at that. Look at that. She must have heard. She must have heard that there was this city that Jesus walked through and everybody that touched the hem of his garment, they all got healed. So if I but touch the hem of his garment, I too will be made whole. She believed. She believed. But that's not enough. That's not enough. We got to look in the Old Testament, Malachi. Malachi 4 verse 2. But you who fear the name of the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. A little bit of study to find this one, but the word wings there is the Hebrew word kanach, kanach. And it's a common noun for a wing, the skirt or the corner of a garment, the edge of the garment, the hem of a garment. And it basically uh, is the sense to cover an attached extremity. So the edge of the garment, watch this, read it again, with healing in the hem of his garment. Healing in his wings. Healing in the fringes of his garment. And the kind of garment that Jesus had on would have been a priestly garment. And there were sections sewn onto that garment. And some theologians believe that there was literally a section that was Jehovah God our healer. And that they would touch that specific part of his garment. And there was healing in that. Now, it's not a matter of just touching him. It's because everybody was touching him. The disciples said, how sayest thou who toucheth thee? Everybody, have you ever seen like a boxer come out of the box, you know, the, the room and he's making his way down to the, to the ring and everybody's reaching over and like touching him and trying to high five? Seen that? You see the other day Tom Hanks and his wife, they were walking out and somebody like bum rushed his wife and got in their way and Tom Hanks went off on him because like paparazzi were all around. That's like what this was. The same kind of thing, this frenzy. Everybody's grabbing at Jesus, touching him. So it's not a matter of who can touch Jesus. Because everyone was touching him and not everyone had the same miracle. We're studying these things out because we want to know what was different about her. What was different about her that in a crowd that everyone is touching Jesus, Jesus knew who received healing. The Bible says that she kept saying to herself, she kept saying to herself, she kept saying to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I touch the hem... So we got to ask the question, she kept saying, she kept saying, she kept saying, who is she talking to? First, I think she was talking to her circumstance. First, I think she was talking to her mountain. She was talking to her problem. I just want you to know. I just want you to know sickness and disease. I just want you to know that when I touch the hem of his garment, you're gone. I just want you, I want you to hear it out of my mouth. That I ain't going to live like this forever, that there will be a day. That when I get a hold of Jesus, this is gone. First, I think she's talking to her circumstance. Secondly, I think she's talking to herself. Because some of us need to talk to ourselves to get ourselves out of bed, to get ourselves up, to get ourselves dressed, to get ourselves moving. Because it's so easy to talk ourselves into not doing something. So you say, no, 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 no. You're going to get up, and you're going to go touch the hem of his garment. And when you do, she was preaching to herself. She was prophesying to herself. She was building herself up in her most holy faith. She kept saying it. Faith says what will happen before anything happens. Woo! 
She believed. She believed what she believed and acted on what she believed before she ever felt anything in her own body. I love that. I love that. She heard the reports. She came behind him. She touched his garment. And she kept saying to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be restored. Think about this. How did she get to him with all those people tightly pressed against him? She was climbing over, pushing around, and crawling under anybody she could get to to get to Jesus. Think about that. She kept saying to herself, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She said it. She acted before she ever felt anything. Mm. It's not, put this up on the screen, it was not touching Jesus that got this woman healed. It was releasing her faith when she touched him that got her healed. If it was merely touching him, everybody was healed. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that she touched him in faith, and Jesus said, who touched me? I felt virtue. I felt healing. Leave me. He only felt that way when she touched him. So it was a matter of releasing her faith at the moment of touching Jesus. And here's the deal, and this is where I see a lot of Christians miss it. We say, we pray, we say we're in faith, and then when it doesn't happen, well, why didn't it happen? See, I, I tried this. If that's ever like the end side of the conversation, I promise you this, you were never actually in faith in the first place. You were trying God out. You were trying an experiment to see if it would work, but you never actually had faith. Because faith knows. Faith knows. Faith is not moved by an outcome. Pastor Mike, this sounds like brainwashing and mind over matter. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely is brainwashing. I mean, what do you think the news is? It's brainwashing you one way. This is, this is brainwashing you, washing you. The Bible says renew your mind daily to the word of God, that your mind needs a wash and a rinse after being out in the world all day. Absolutely, it's brainwashing. God's word never fails. It never fails. But how come I didn't get what I prayed for? Okay, one of two things. One of two things. Ready? One, you were never actually in faith. You were in fear, begging God to do something, but you didn't actually know that it was his will or believe it. Right? Come on. Or, you already had the victory. You already had the victory. I mean, here's something that we don't ever want to talk about, right? The church never wants to talk about death. We never want to talk about death. And the whole church world has been really touchy not to talk about death since late 2019. Be very careful. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. You know what the problem is today? America is so wealthy that we don't actually want to die. We want to live forever. Let's figure out cryogenics, anti-aging cream, anti-aging shots. Put some Botox here, Botox there, a lift here, a little stitch here. You go back and look at the Bible times. They gloried in the hopes of one day going to an eternal place with God where there's no pain, no suffering, no distress. We don't actually want that. We don't actually believe the scripture that says, for me to live is good, but to die is gain. I know. I didn't know. I didn't think I was going to get a lot of amens on that. I, I understand it. I understand it. But listen, you can't kill me. I can die. I already done that. I already done that. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that live in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Come on, somebody. Like, that's, you signed up for an eternal life. An eternal life. God's word has never failed. It's never failed. You have an eternal hope. That's the promise. 
That's the promise. Here's what I want us to walk away with today. Here's my big idea. Still Jesus kept looking around, but the woman knowing what she had done, she was alarmed and frightened and trembled. She fell down before Jesus. She told him the whole truth. Because death and life are still standing there. Although she has received her healing and she's received a miracle, Jairus can still kill her. But in this moment, in this moment, she chose to accept or release the power to bring death to the disease that was in her body. Listen to this. Listen to this. She lays down at the feet of Jesus her issue. And she picks up peace. Look what it says here. He says, go into peace and be continually healed. And I want to tell someone this today. If you protect your peace, you can maintain your healing. If you protect your peace, you can maintain your healing. See, the enemy wants to come and steal your peace. So take a moment. Just close your eyes for one minute. Let me bypass your brain. Let me bypass your flesh. Let me speak to your spirit for a second. Great is your peace and your undisturbed composure. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Let the peace of God surpass all your understanding that you may rest in his goodness, rest in his mercy. That, that person who's been dealing with not sleeping well, rest in his peace. That person who's been having a problem at home and your marriage has been on the fritz and you've been arguing, let peace rule your house. That couple that doesn't know how to talk things out, let peace be part of your communication. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but only that what is uplifting to those who hear it. Bring light with your words. Let peace surround you, your heart and your mind. And I'm not trying to be mind over matter today, but these are the kind of things that we need to say to ourselves. I'm not going to think this way. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be depressed. Peace. Somebody here, you've, you've experienced healing in your body, and, 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 but every time, like a little bit of a symptom comes up, there's this fear that tries to attack. So here it is again. Just let peace. Peace take over. You see, she operated in peace. She walked in peace. And I want to tell you, whatever your issue is, whatever your issue is, if you would lay it down at the feet of Jesus today, lay it at his altar, lay it at his feet, he would dispose of it properly for you. If you're here today and you've never had the opportunity to take that first step towards Jesus, we would love to walk you through that process today. If you're here and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, but you know today's the day. On this Independence Day weekend, we love to celebrate the fact that Jesus made a way for us to be independent or set free from sin and death. And we would become dependent upon the things of God. If you're here today and you need Jesus Christ in your life, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. And because we love you so much, we all pray it together. It goes this, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.